الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه وبعد All praises due to Allah May Allah's peace and blessings be upon his prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم Last time we talked about the history predating the birth of the Prophet the circumstances in Arabia, the world in general, and in Arabia in particular, how it looked like politically, the Roman, the Persian, India, all of that, how it looked like socially, social structure. Some places they have this discrimination and this uh, uh, levels and different status and all of that. And uh, how in Arabia they have jahiliya. And how the political, the social, the economical, the religious. And we also talked about the personal life. The personal character or the traits of the Arabian character. And how all of this was in preparation to receive a Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. How all of this happening in the world was screaming, was waiting, was thirsty for guidance. So understanding all of this, now we understand the context of the birth of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Also, this teaches us something important for ourselves. Whenever you see all this corruption, and whenever you see all these problems, and whenever you see all this facade and problem, and zulm, transgression and oppression, you know that Allah Azza Jal have hikmah, have wisdom. We're not surrendering, we're not accepting but we're having hope and trust and conviction and belief in Allah Azza wa Jal that the guidance is coming and the solution is coming and the khair is coming and the haq will succeed and the haq will be victorious and triumphant because Allah Azza wa Jal said that in the Quran. سَبَقَتْ كَلِمَتُنَا لِعِبَادِنَا الْمُرْسَلِينَ إِنَّهُمْ لَهُمُ الْمَنْصُورُونَ وَإِنَّ جُنْدَنَا لَهُمُ الْغَالِبُونَ Allah Azza wa Jalla said, and our word came to all our messengers that the victory at the end is to our servants. And our soldiers are the ones who win. وَالْعَاقِبَةُ لِلتَّقْوَى Allah Azza wa Jalla said, the end is always for piety. وَالْعَاقِبَةُ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ for the pious and righteous. So as a concept, it wins. And as people following the concept, they win. You're paying attention to this? So Allah Azza said, the taqwa wins. The haq wins. And those who are following the haq, they become winners. Not because their name, not because their culture, not because what they have, because they are following al haq This should be very clear, huh? So people before Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they were winning battles, they were ruling people, they having empires, they having kingdoms, they have whatever it is. On personal levels they are winning, on clans and tribes they are winning, or on nations they are winning. But when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam comes, all this changes. One man. Representing what? Al-Haq. That's a lesson, huh? There's a lesson. Instead of focusing on Mawlid and Milad and what we do and do this sect and that sect, <laughs> learn. Learn what did his birth, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, brought to the world. And what you, as a follower of Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, bringing not to the world, la balash, forget about the world, to your family. What are you bringing to your family? Huh? What are you bringing to your family? Money? Bank account? Car? House, food, water, clothing, what? 
What is the value, my brother? What is the value, my sister? Are you bringing to your family, putting it in your house? What is your value? If you die today, if I die today, how my family will survive religiously? We worry about the insurance, about the medical bills, about the funeral, about the house, the mortgage, the car, and all that. But how? Are they going to pray after you? If you are absent, if you disappear today, your family will pray, will stay Muslims? How long? What your spouse would do without you? That's the value. Scary, right? It is kind of, but somebody has to say it. So that is the value that Rasulullah Sallallahu brought. And because he is attached to the wahi of Allah, it changed the world. So why I and you cannot change one family at a time, one community at a time? What is the value that you bring into this masjid when you enter that door? And what is the value that you are taking with you when you exit that door? Inshallah, I hope these sessions change our mind. We are not here to tell the story. We are here to learn from the story. Okay? That's why this is a reflection on the seerah of Rasulullah Sallallahu We draw the energy from the seerah. We draw the lessons and we reflect on them so we become better people. It's not just to appease your feeling and make you feel good and happy. It's a feel good kind of story. It is. That's one of the benefits of reading the seerah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is to give you the comfort and nice feeling. That's one of the hikmah of it. That's good. But that's not this session. This session is not for that. This session actually is more of a reality check. Take it like that, inshallah, Rabbil Alameen. So we talked about that until the incident of the elephant. We know Qissa Al-Fil, Surah Al-Fil, uh, attacking the Mecca. And how we learn from that, subhanallah, how Islam from the beginning, even before it starts, yeah, and these people were following the deen of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Distorted, yes. Mixed up, yeah. It's wrong. Deen, yani, muharraf. They are distorted. It is mixed up with idols worshipping. But what was the core? The deen of Ibrahim. We are the children of Ismail. This is the house of Allah. This is a blessed place, right? Those were their core values, correct? Yes? Even before a deen which is defined with its rules, they were envied for that. Envied from all the religions. The Nasara, the Yahud, everyone envied this Arab because of that. That's why Abraha came. Why he came with all Hadal Jaysh al Aram Ram Kullu Why? Why he's coming there to destroy the Kaaba, destroy a small building? If he does not realize its value in the hearts of these people, why he would come? Leah, he could have sent the elephant. Did you think about that? He could have done, sent like an army twice that much. And he's waiting for the news. But you know the value of the Kaaba brought the best to destroy it. <laughs> its value, it is shown through how big is the enemy. You know when somebody valuable, the one who fights them is not anyone. You know, find everyone have their value. Yani you will know the value of the person from his enemy. <laughs> from the enemy. How the macro of the enemy, their plan, and their perseverance, and their grudge, you will know how valuable is that. Hmm? You will know how valuable is that. So when you see a war persistent, and people doing all what they do, and you think, why are they doing this? This is such a da'if. It's not da'if. It's not what you think. Sometimes you think it is weak, but it's not. It is very valuable. That's why it's persistent on that spot, on that place. I'm sure you, you get it, yeah. Right? So Abraha is coming there. So that shows the hasad of the people to the Arab before even the deen of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam comes. Now you understand why when it came, everybody was against, right? Why Kisra, he kills the messenger. He could not contain himself. While he said he's the, you know, his ancestors are the gods. Yeah, this was like uh, below him. A messenger coming and telling him, you know, 
below him to kill, you know, someone like that, but he couldn't take it. Right? So that, that shows. Also, we see how many of the tribes, they sacrificed, and we will see those traits of sacrifice for a cause coming tonight, inshallah, we'll, we'll talk about that. Many of the kings of Himyar between Yemen and Mecca, they fought Abraha, and many of them lost their lives. Many of them were injured, even though they are not from Mecca. That shows also fighting for the concept that Islam used later on. Also, how those betraying the Ummah, they are always humiliated. There were also some Arab, like those who died for the cause to defend Mecca, even though they are far away from it. There were some who volunteered to lead and guide Abraha to destroy the Kaaba. And that shows us that the Ummah always have Munafiqeen in it. Have people who belong by name and by color and by language, but they are the furthest from the Ummah. Sometimes the enemy cares about Islam more than them. Sahih? Really? So, and it, since then. Also, it shows how Allah Azza Jal honored Al Kaaba. How this is also a sign of the birth of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You know, war crimes, right? War crimes is a human trait. And whoever becomes victorious, they have problems. They will go kill and rape and destroy, and it comes with every war. Yani. Okay? That's why Islam was very clear about this. Islam was very clear about this. You cannot kill someone who's running away. You cannot kill someone who's injured. You cannot mutilate the body. Huh? You cannot do these things for show. You cannot burn, you cannot drown, you cannot chop off the head, you can't, you can't, you can't. You can do that to women, you can do that. So when you see someone in the name of Islam doing it, uh, there is a doubt there that this is Muslim to start with. <laughs> right? Doing all... Uh, no. <laughs> really, no. <laughs> Doesn't work like that. Okay? In the history, they... Muslims fight, and the people, when they get over one Muslim, they cut off his head and send it to their leader. So one of the Muslim army leaders did the same, send it. He said, don't do that. He said, but that's what they do. This, this is them, but we don't do it. We don't do that. You don't cut the head of the leader and bring it to me as a victory. Don't do that. You're not allowed to do this. You understand? So Islam was very clear about this issue. So imagine now, Abraha were victorious and he went over Mecca. Now we understand, right? The war crimes. And the mother of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was pregnant in Rasulullah at that time. So out of ikram to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, no war took place. <laughs> and he could not even enter. That was ikram to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now, and Allah azza wa jalla preserved his house, and this became a, an incident in the calendar. We talked about that as well. The birth of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The nasab of Rasulullah is very important. We hinted or alluded to it last time that Allah chose Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa from Adam alayhi wa sallam all the way to Abdullah and the Amina. Right? Choice, 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 choice. All pure nasab. You know, silsilat al nasab, pure. From the beginning to him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Even after Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, anyone who comes from the nasab of the children of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they call them ashraf. Sharif. Abu Sharif, Sharif, yani honorable. So, for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam until uh, until Adnan the nasab is agreed upon from Adnan to Ismail they agree that Adnan is from the grandchildren of Ismail but how many between Adnan and Ismail there are differences okay? above Ismail means Ibrahim alayhi wa sallam above that yani 
no authenticity. No authenticity of this from this from this. Because you read in some books, they give it until Adam alayhi salam, right? But that's not some uh, va a strong uh, foundation there. Imam al-Bukhari, uh, he mentioned the nasab of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. He said Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ibn Abdullah, Ibn Abdul Muttalib, Ibn Hisham, Ibn Abd Manaf, Ibn Qusay, Ibn Kilab, Ibn Murrah, Ibn Ka'ab, Ibn Luay, Ibn Ghalib, Ibn Fihr, Ibn Malik, Ibn Nadr, Ibn Kinana, Ibn Khuzayma, Ibn Mudrika, Ibn Ilyas, Ibn Mudar, Ibn Nizar, Ibn Ma'id, مش معدة, Ibn Ma'id, Ibn Adnan. The Nasab of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, this is the Nasab of Rasulullah until Adnan. And the uh, 